city of love, romance and dreams. So they say. I used to say it too. But ever since that day, the day of the murder, I've always associated my beloved Paris with death. I was at home having a bath when my editor called. Collard, get your ass over to the Palais Royale now. You got an interview. With Pierre Carchamp. Yes, the Pierre Carchamp. No photos, so leave your gear at home. He has for you personally. Don't ask me why. Anyhow, this could be big, so if he makes a pass, don't forget. Just smile, say yes, and keep taking notes. So charming, and so very apt. Pierre Carchon was a media king, a national hero, and one of the most infamous adulterers in Europe. He and his wife Imelda were just one step down from royalty. Whoa, I hate mimes, but unless you humor them, they don't go away. Here I was, the palace of the Media King and the Ice Queen. I pressed the doorbell and set in motion a chain of events which would change my life forever. Yes? What is it? Madame, my name is Nico Collard. I'm here to see Monsieur Carchon. Come up, we're on the first floor. Madame Carchon, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, I'm sure. The Ice Queen was certainly living up to her reputation. Will you be staying for the interview? Mademoiselle, I know little of my husband's business affairs, and I care even less. I certainly have no intention of watching him pour over yet another pretty little journalist. Pretty? You're too kind, madame. Ah, the talented and very beautiful Mademoiselle Collard. Such a pleasure to meet you at last. Monsieur Carchon, I am honored. Oh, I'm sure you are. Call me Pierre, please. But I do not flatter you idly. I was a friend of your father. He was a great man. My father? He never mentioned. He and I were very close. And then his death. So tragic. I must... <laughs> Imelda, your damned cat's in my study again. Another Ming vase, I suppose. Excuse me for one moment, my dear girl. You journalists are getting younger each year. Perhaps it's the rest of the world getting older, madame. That was no cat. My God, what? Monsieur Carchon! He's dead. I must call the police. You'd better stay here. There was a man. It was the mime. Do you think he... Well, I believe we can rule out suicide, don't you? No wonder they called her the Ice Queen. She would have been top of my list of suspects if I hadn't seen the attacker myself. And if I hadn't come across a couple of murders just like this already. One of the most important men in Europe, murdered. And here was I, 
Nico Coulard, alone at the scene of the crime. Should I wait for the cops? Or start my own investigation? It was a no-brainer. A small round piece of glass had been cut out of the pane. This was a professional job. The killer must have used a ladder to reach the window. He was long gone. Guess he folded that ladder up, popped it in his pocket and took it with him. Mimes and guns don't usually go together, but I had an idea that this was no ordinary mime. I'd come across this murderer before, and written about him. The costume killer. At least that's what I'd called him. It was one of my hair clips. My favourite, in fact. It must have fallen when I was knocked down. Some people hate searching corpses for clues. Me, I'm okay with it. Reminds me of an old boyfriend. Carchon had been shot. In his pocket, I found a ticket stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. Taking the ticket meant I tampered with the evidence. There was no going back now. I closed his eyes. It was the least I could do for the poor fellow. The police could turn up at any minute. Somewhere there were clues to the murder, and I needed to find them. I reckoned that cloth might just turn out to be useful. Even my fingernail wouldn't fit into such a small hole. Aha! Uh -huh. Nico, you are just so damn good at this stuff. Instead of comforting Imelda, I was ransacking her flat. Why? Because there was something going on here, and I had to get answers before the cops arrived. And hey, she'd been rude to me, so she had it coming. It was a tube of acrylic paint, French ultramarine. Just the colour I was after for my bathroom. I'm sorry, I have to go. Someone is... Young lady, what are you doing? Oh, this paint. <laughs> it's my favourite colour. For God's sake, keep the damn stuff. Excuse me, madame. Yes? I am so sorry for your loss, madame. No, you're not. You're a journalist. Journalists don't feel sorry. Not true. We shall see. Why did your husband send for me? What did he want to discuss? I have no idea. His business was his business. He never told you anything? No. And frankly, I preferred it that way. How did your husband know my father? I have no idea. You didn't know him? Thierry Coulard? Pierre knew a lot of people I didn't know, most of them women. Why would a mime want to kill your husband? Pierre had plenty of enemies. Half the husbands in Paris for a start. This is quite a scoop for you. I suppose you're already inventing the headlines. Just because I am a journalist. Don't patronise me. You're all cut from the same cloth. Do you have any moral sense at all? Yes. That's why I do this job. You do it to see your name in print. As if. My editor gets the byline, I just do the work. Well, don't expect my sympathy. The police will be here soon, madame. Is there anybody you would like me to contact? Family? Friends? No. I have no family. Pierre and I were... He was all I had, really. Not much, was it? The dutiful wife? That was my role. He never talked, never let me in. I know one thing, madame. What? 
If you want to find out who killed your husband, then you let me do the job, not the police. Why? How do I know I can trust you? Your husband invited me here today because he needed me. I think he knew somebody wanted to kill him, and he knew I could help. I doubt it was your database he was after. You're wrong. I was onto his killers already, I am sure of it. Please, you owe it to him. I don't know. All I need is a few more minutes to look around before the police come. You really do have a moral sense, don't you? I trust so few people. And perhaps Pierre really did think that you could help. Of course it wouldn't have stopped him seducing you too. Here, take this. It's the key to the drawing room next to the library at the end of the hall. It was Pierre's room. I rarely went in there. I couldn't. I was too scared of what I might find. Thank you. I promise you won't regret this. Now we were getting somewhere. As expected, the desk was yet another priceless antique, yawn. The blotter and in-tray had clearly been placed with mathematical precision. My heart skipped a beat. It was a carved elephant, but not just any carved elephant. It had been made by my father. I knew for certain because in my apartment I had its exact twin, carved into a box he had made. So Cochon had known my father. They really must have been friends. I decided to take the carved elephant. It clearly meant nothing to Imelda. I didn't need a sheet of blotting paper. Not while it was blank. I didn't want to take the tray, but I knew that I could use it. The painting showed the cachons together, in love. As the poet said, the past is a different country. Or did I read that in a fortune cookie? There was the very faintest of clicks. Behind the picture was a safe. In the safe was some kind of artifact. There were strange symbols on its surface. It looked like the printer's blocks I'd made at art school. If there was one thing I'd learned about symbols, they are always important. But these symbols scratched into stone were impossible to read. I needed to find a way of printing them. At least the stone was round. But what could I use for ink? And what could I print on? Sure, I was stealing, but I knew Imelda didn't know about the artifact, and Carchon was past caring. I smeared the paint all over the cloth. When I do messy, I really like to put my heart into it. I hoped this was going to help. They don't make lace like that anymore. I wiped the paint-covered cloth over the surface of the stone cylinder. It took me right back to art class at school. And Maurice, my gorgeous art teacher. Such a shame they had to fire him. Ah well. Concentrate, Nico, concentrate. Genius! The roller and the paint worked just as I planned, but what did it say? A secret message had been printed on the blotting paper. It was some kind of coded message. It read, 
Sub judice. I may not have learned a lot as a journalist, but that was a term I knew well. It means a legal case that is before the courts. Below it was a sequence of letters that made no sense. I suddenly realized there was a connection between the boat ticket and the coded message. The boat ticket was stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. The Conciergerie on the Ile de la Cité, by the river, housed the ancient law courts. So, sub judice could in this case mean literally under the law courts, below the conciergerie. I was pretty sure I'd found all I could here. And besides, all this opulence was making me pine for my regular life of poverty. This was a huge story. It was also one heck of a puzzle with a lot of pieces missing. But I was going to crack it. And if I could just remember the name of that fancy prize you get for being an ace journalist, I was definitely going to win it this time. Did you find anything useful? This carving? Do you know anything about it? It was Pierre's. What does the statue have to do with... Please, I need to know. He was given it by a friend. Something to do with Africa. He never explained any more? No. But I think it was important to him. Always on display. Why? It was carved by my father. Oh, I see. I didn't know. Imelda, I will do everything I can to find the killer. Thank you, my dear. And if the police ask, don't worry, you were never here. Sub judice was the key. I was going to have to find a way under the conciergerie. I decided to head straight for the quayside on the Ile de la Cité. If there was a way of getting under the conciergerie, it would have to be from there. Canchon wasn't the type for messing about on the river. He was up to something down here. Something that got him killed. I tried pushing the fence, but it wouldn't move. A strange pair of locks stopped the latches from releasing the gate. One down, one to go.
Nothing like a good convent education for honing your lockpicking skills. For a room full of junk, that was one very sophisticated lock system. This place was definitely fishy. In more ways than one. An old shell case. I wondered what that was doing there. The words sinister and dexter were carved on either side. Now any good convent girl like me knows the old Roman for left, right, left, right. But what did it mean here? Mystery solved. Carchon's stone cylinder slotted into the hole with a satisfying click. Rolling out the painted cylinder had given me a print of a secret message. It read, Subjudice. Below it was a sequence of letters, S, D, S, S, D, S, S. A satisfying click told me I turned it to the right position. It felt like tumblers in a safe. Another click, another step closer. I love the sound of locks clicking open. I removed the stone cylinder. Oh my god! The slab came down with a hell of a force. With nothing to hold it up, the cross dropped back down again. Lifting the cross closed the entrance door and also opened some kind of stone panel. Ingenious. The stone slab had flattened one end of the shell case. The stone cross was propped up. Now I was getting somewhere. The artifact slotted into the hole perfectly. Behind the old walls, I could hear some kind of mechanism groaning into life. But whatever had been triggered had now jammed. I removed the shell case. The cross didn't drop back down. Some kind of mechanism was holding it up. A 
another good use for a shell case. Another secret room. Somebody had something to hide. But was it what I was looking for? Wow! Through the darkness, I could see that this was a stateroom. But for what purpose? And how did it tie in with Carchon? Amazing! The thing still worked. The room lit up bright. It was pretty clear from the lack of dust that someone had been working very recently at this desk. Oh my god! The sheet was a printout with my personal information. Everything from my favorite food to my waist size. They were right about chocolate, but come on guys, I'm a size 10. There was even a picture of me taken with a telephoto lens. Carchon wouldn't have taken these pictures himself. This was big and organized. I was part of it, and people were getting murdered. This was the article I'd written about the costume killer. My suspicions were right. Conchon had cut it out. Two businessmen had been killed, one in Italy, one in Japan. In each case, the killer had worn a costume, a penguin, and then a snowman. But that wasn't the only link between the two murders. Both the victims had been big media do-gooders, and I proved they were just the opposite. So, how did they fit in with Carchon? Inside the drawer, I found a note written in some kind of code. Don't you just hate it when that happens? A photo, long lost, had fallen down the back of the drawer. It was very old, but there was no mistaking the guy in the foreground. Carchon. Behind him were soldiers, a burning village and a corpse. The photograph was cropped on the right-hand side. Somebody else in the picture obviously didn't want to be in it anymore. I wasn't surprised. This was Africa in the 60s. An uprising was being brutally suppressed. And here was Mr. Media himself, Carchon, doing the suppressing. The photograph was not just powerful evidence. It was also my ticket to one explosive story.
looked at the note. It read, Pierre, full report to follow. But this is too urgent to wait. Arno and Yamada both dead. This is not a coincidence. Indeed, it seems that all of us who came together in July are in danger. Take great care. X. I wasn't the only one to make the connection between the costume killer murders. I'd been right all along. That was why he had asked to meet me. But what did I know that he didn't? I had enough for a story. An amazing story that was going to make my reputation and blow Conchance to pieces. I needed to get home fast and start typing. Bonsoir, Coulard. Nico, it's Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie, you cracked open the champagne yet? Are you crazy? What's wrong? Wait a minute. You didn't print it, did you? Of course I didn't print. That's the best piece I've written. The last, as far as I'm concerned. It's important. It's suicidal. You can't destroy a national hero. He deserved it. His corpse isn't even cold. Ronnie. Two hours ago, I told you what I'd found. You loved it. You begged me to write it up immediately. Two hours is a long time in newspapers, Nico. Someone's got to you, haven't they? Listen up, Nicole, and listen good. Pierre Carchon had a lot of friends, powerful friends. For your own sake. Forget what happened. You got it. End of conversation. Good night. This should have been my big break. But I knew there was nowhere else to sell the story. If Ronnie wouldn't print it, nobody would. Bonsoir, Collard. Mademoiselle Collard, my name is Plantard. I need to talk to you about your story, your Pierre Carchon story. How did you know about that? There are people out there, madame, who will be very upset by this story. Oh, really? Well, it's their lucky day. It's been spiked. Yes, I know. We must meet. We must? I have information relating to your costume killer stories. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., Café de la Chandelle Verte, Rue Alain Cour. I shall be wearing a grey overcoat. You must talk to no one about this. You can't tell me what to... Tomorrow at 8. I'll be waiting. People complain about newspaper articles all the time, but not usually before they're printed. I was beginning to feel scared. This guy, Plantard, could I trust him? Should I meet him or forget the whole business? I didn't have an answer. Mademoiselle Collard. Oh, hello there. Don't tell me. I'm going to meet a tall, dark man. No, I don't think so. Why would you say that? Oh, just a wild guess. Anyway, your cousin's female and very pretty. What? Your cousin from Marseille. How could you forget her so soon? She was only in your apartment yesterday. Ah, oh, really? Such a charming young girl. Isn't she? And in my apartment, you say? She let herself in, of course. She's got a key. Suddenly, everything made sense. My apartment had been bugged. That was how Plantard knew all about my article. How did I know? Because the only cousin I have is a sweet little guy called Jean-Marc, who owns a patisserie in Le Touquet. These people were determined, which meant they were also very dangerous. I suppose she'd forgotten which apartment was mine. Oh, Miss Collard, you're a mind reader. That's just what she said. Oh, I bet it was. Well, I'd better be going. See what my sweet cousin's been getting up to. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Hello, could I ask you some questions? 
That depends. Are you a cop? No, I'm a journalist. It's late, aren't you? They already took away the body. I'm doing a follow-up on the story. Tell me, are you related to the workman I saw digging the hole? Don't talk to me about flobage. Pa! Okay. He just won a fortune on the horses and he won't give me a cent. Well, it's his money. When he was broke, he was happy to touch me for a loan. Brothers should look after each other, he used to say. He's changed his tune now he's brassed up. You're doing a fine job. Damn right I am. You should be writing about me, not that idiot that got blown up. The heroes who pick up the pieces when disaster strikes. Exactly. Well, give me your best smile and maybe I'll put your picture in the article. Oh, right. Uh, just give me a minute to do my hair. The police had removed the body, but nothing else looked disturbed. Oops, stupid thing. A panel had been blown away, revealing a gap. From this angle, I could see that something had been lodged in the gap behind the pipes. Behind the table were some damaged pipes. Voila! The police and forensic teams had missed a vital piece of evidence. Some kind of pouch. On the pouch was the cross symbol of Cochon's organization. I was on the right track. On the pouch was the cross symbol of Cochon's organization. Inside the pouch were two items. A strange metallic artifact and a letter in some kind of code. The artifact had a sword laid across scales, the scales of justice. I wondered if this connected to the room at the quayside. Another coded message using the same cipher system. So, Plantard was involved with Cochon.
Plantard. Pierre Kiel. Murderer must have followed trail from Arno and Yamada. He will come for us now. We must be vigilant. Thierry's girl broke into Pierre's safe. She worries me. Imelda. So much for Imelda's innocence. Plantard was working for her. And for Conchon. But why did Plantard want to meet? Was it a trap? Or maybe he was in too deep and needed me to tell the story. Whatever the story was. One thing was clear. It was a story worth killing for. There was nothing of interest beyond some bloody debris. Some journalists drink on the job, not me. Hey, what about my photos? Oh, of course. How could I forget? Well, I'm waiting. Get your camera out. Camera? Oh, I forgot. It broke. Hello. They should never send a woman to do a man's job. Well, this woman had fooled him easily enough. And found the evidence the police had missed. Hello? Yes? Have the police finished with the crime scene? What does it look like? I got orders to board up the windows and that's what I'm doing. So the body's been removed? I certainly hope so, or it'll stink to high heaven when they take down these boards. Shouldn't you check? Are you kidding? They don't pay me enough to put up boards, let alone check for dead bodies. Au revoir. The strange metal artifact I found in Plantard's pouch had pointed back to the quayside. and remove the shell case. Plantard's key fitted the lock, so he must have used this place too. folders were empty. Someone had removed anything that they thought could be incriminating. A photograph had been torn up. If I could just arrange the pieces. God, it can't be.
There was no doubt about it. It was a picture of my father. Papa. Oh, God. After what I'd gone through, I thought I could face anything. But not this. My father. The one person in the whole world who I truly admired. Standing with Cachon while those murderers carried on with their evil work. My father, grinning at the camera. I couldn't believe it. I realized that I desperately needed to get to the bottom of this story, and that I really needed George. I had messages waiting to be played. You have three messages. Hey, Collard, it's me, your favorite editor. Ah, uh, guess what? I'm gonna give you a second chance. I need somebody to write the TV column. Pays lousy, so what's new? If you're interested, drop by the office. In fact, drop by the office anyway. We have to talk, Nico. That story of yours I spiked. It won't go away. You've made some dangerous enemies out there. Hey, Nico, it's your old pal. I mean, your new pal, George. Whoa, Ireland. <laughs> it's a whole different country. And I got some amazing news for you. Gem of a story, in fact. Well, oh, gotta go. Yeah, fella here's got a drink lined up for me. See you tomorrow, Nico. Slonsha. Yep, only here for a day, and I'm speaking the lingo like a local. Mademoiselle Coulard, this is Emel de Carchon. I wanted to thank you for being so understanding when... Come to lunch, why don't you? Tomorrow... I might have more news. There's a Monsieur Merlon coming to see me this evening. He says he knows why Pierre was murdered. In fact, he'll be here shortly. I shall let you know what he says. Goodbye, dear girl. Till tomorrow. Merlin? Oh, my God. Merlin's the killer. I'd better get over there and mourn her now. When it came to being two-faced, Imelda was up there with the best. I owed her nothing. But I couldn't just let her die. I arrived to find the Palais Royal courtyard deserted. I only hoped that I'd beaten the assassin here. I had to warn Imelda before it was too late. The intercom system wasn't working. Bad sign. Somebody had cut the wire. Locked? No way was I going to break through a door like that. That broken window looked like the best way in. Fixed tight. Presumably to stop critics stealing it. Who else would want to? I unhooked the first wire. I released the second wire. Even with both wires removed, the statue remained upright. If I could deconstruct this, I could deconstruct anything. The plastic sheet was thick and strong. I'd need more than my hands to tear it.
My God, I'm too late. Imelda. Oh no. Nico? Don't worry, you're going to be all right. You know that isn't true. It was Merlin, wasn't it? Dressed as a cavalier. Absurd. You came to warn me, didn't you? I must be crazy. Let me see you, Nico. All this time you were just using me. Which one is the real Imelda? You are an extraordinary girl. Thierry would have been so proud of you. You didn't know my father. So like him. Something about the eyes. I wish we'd had time to get to know each other. She was gone. She cheated me, lied to me, used me. But why? Even in death, Imelda looked the same. Beautiful, inscrutable. The Ice Queen alone in her ice palace. I opened it. Inside was a tiny gold key. I took the key. I had to leave. I knew I could never return. In the dim light, I caught the reflection of something metallic. A small, sinister-looking metal disc had been tucked under my father's box. It was a bug. Oh, chère cousine, you left me a little present. You shouldn't have. You don't scare me. Espèce de... The box was carved by my father. It never had a key. The elephant on the lid was a perfect match to Cochon's. I took out the key. I couldn't believe it. Imelda's key opened my father's box. I dreaded what I was going to find inside. It was a photograph of Imelda. But why here? In my father's box? I felt as if a black hole had swallowed me up. Imelda and Carchon grinning. While behind them a village was being razed to the ground. Its people butchered. And there, next to them, staring out at me across the years, my own father. There was a letter. I feared there was even worse to come. Hotel St. Georges, Algiers, Friday. My darling Thierry, by the time you read this, you'll be safely out of Africa. You need not fear. Pierre and the organization do not know who you are really working for, or about us. Did you think I would betray you? I could not. You wanted me to leave him, but I don't have your courage. I know too much of what has been going on here. They would find me and they would kill us both. Enjoy your life in Paris, Thierry. Your life of honor, of patriotic duty. Do they give medals to spies? No, they'll just give you a funny job in an embassy somewhere. I could never share that with you. Imagine me, a diplomat's wife. So I must stay here with Pierre, the two of us bound together by what we have done to this country. Au revoir, my love. You will be in my heart until I die. Imelda. Suddenly everything made sense. My father had been working undercover for the government. He was one of the good guys after all. He and Imelda must have fallen in love. 
She'd found out who he really was, so he had to leave. It had broken her heart, but she had never revealed it to anyone. I knew I couldn't either. Whatever he was doing, he'd had good reason to keep it secret. I decided I would respect that and tell nobody. <laughs>